Preston Physics, Grade 11, Forces, Note 4, Free Body Diagrams. Free body diagrams are a way to show all the forces that are acting on an object. They're very powerful because a free body diagram is another way to show our given information from a question. It's giving us all of this information which we're then putting into a diagram rather than just putting a list. When we draw free body diagrams, we always put the forces drawn from the center of the object. When we're drawing an object, we can always represent it as a square, as we've done here. We always have the force of gravity acting, and then if it's in contact with a surface, we have the normal force. These two forces are equal in magnitude in this case. We have an applied force here, and then the force of friction. Now if we look at this, the force that's being applied is greater than the force of friction. This means that the box is actually going to accelerate to the right because that force is greater. When we're looking for forces that are greater than one another, we're actually talking about the net force. What a net force is, is the force that's totaled up when all of the forces in an object don't actually balance. Most of the times the net force will either be in the x direction or the y direction, and all of the other forces will balance out. When we have a net force, this causes an acceleration in the direction of the net force. Our first example, we're looking at a rock falling. First, we want to draw all the forces on the rock. So we've drawn a little rock here. If you want to make it a square, you can. Notice that the only thing that's acting on the rock is gravity. This makes us have a net force and acceleration in the downward direction. Try the next problem on your own and we'll take it up in class. Now when an object doesn't have a net force, it has balanced forces. Now this is a really important concept to understand because when all the forces on an object are balanced, the object either stays at rest, meaning nothing's going to be moving, or it stays at constant velocity. The object can continue moving at the same speed because no force is being applied to it. Now looking at the first example on the next page, we're pushing a block across a table, but the important thing to notice here is we're at steady speed. So we have the force of gravity down, because it's in contact with the table, we have the normal force, and these forces are equal. Then we have the force that we're applying and we're pushing it, but also the force of friction. Now it's important to note that we were at steady speed, and we're at steady speed means we're at constant velocity, so all of our forces must balance. In the next example, we're pushing that same block across the table, but this time we're releasing it after we've pushed it. So we put our block, we add in our force of gravity. Because it's in contact with the table, we have our normal force, and those two forces balance out. But because we're no longer pushing this block, we have velocity in one direction, but our acceleration is going backwards because that's where our net force is. We only have friction acting in the x direction. Our acceleration's back, so the object's slowing down, which makes sense. Finally, we're looking at an elevator going up. So it's going up again at steady speed. Now, when we draw our little elevator, we put our guy in it, our force of gravity will be going down. Elevators actually have tension pulling them up because they're being pulled up by a rope. But because it's at steady speed, our tension and gravity have to be equal to one another. Otherwise, we'd be accelerating, either accelerating up or decelerating when we're getting to the top. We will look at the rocket example as a class tomorrow. We're now going to look at how to calculate the net force using the first and the third example on the last page. Now, looking at the first example, we have a piano being pushed down a hall. I want you to ignore all the writing that's on the right side of your note. First, we make our free body diagram where we have our applied force is 250 newtons to the right, and our force of friction is 220 newtons to the left. We make right positive and left negative. And then we're just going to have force applied minus the force of friction. We get 255 minus 220, and we get 35 newtons. Because it's positive, 
This means that the object's moving to the right or accelerating right. The next example we're going to look at is the third example where we're lifting up a barbell. Now it's not quite being picked up off the ground. So we draw our barbell. We know that gravity is acting down. We have a normal force that's acting up, but we also have an applied force. Now notice that the normal force is smaller than the force of gravity here. Our net force has to be zero because we're at rest. If positive is up and negative is down, our normal force plus our applied force minus the force of gravity will equal zero. We can find out our normal force here by doing the force of gravity, which is mg, minus our applied force, which was 3,500, and we end up getting 5,488 minus 3,500, and then our normal force is equal to 1,988. Notice again that our force of gravity and our normal force are not equal to each other here. Our normal force is far smaller because we have an applied force as well. And the normal force only has to balance out the forces so that we don't accelerate either off the ground or into the earth. We will take up the other examples tomorrow in class and kind of clarify any questions people have. The questions from your yellow duotang are 9 to 15 for this note.